So we'll talk here about the um, some of the key concepts first. When I teach IDLE Foundation classes, some of the key concepts are really two of the key takeaways that I hope that students will get um, are terminology and the importance of communication. So if nothing else, I hope that they'll remember those two things. So terminology, because I think it's helpful to be speaking the same language, and that really does feed into the importance of communication within um, within IT. I'm referring here to the RACI matrix. Um, for those of you who were on previous sessions, you may remember I talked about uh, RACI, which stands for Responsible, Accountable, Consulted, and Informed. Um, it's often helpful to be able to identify for any given activity within the IT processes um, who ultimately is accountable for the process, you sh and you should only have one person who's accountable, then who is responsible for the activities, who, who should be consulted, and who should be informed. So, for example, um, within many of the activities within change management, the change manager is accountable. Um, the various technical subject matter experts are responsible for implementing the change. But don't forget about the consulted and informed. The business certainly should be consulted for their requirements. And please, please don't forget to inform the service desk when a change is going to be implemented. That's one of the biggest causes that we see of incidents within the service desk. Um, the biggest cause is uh, an unplanned or undisclosed change. For communication, it's important that communication flow through from the original request from the end user to the service desk, to the IT technicians, to the suppliers, to the um, IT operations people. It can get confusing very easily if we're not following the appropriate paths of communication within IT. Another important um, motivator then to have a good IT service management tool that will help facilitate the communication between and among the various groups within IT. Now that we've talked about some of the basic concepts, we'll take a look at the functions, the four functions that I mentioned within IT. The most visible functional area uh, as far as the customer is typically concerned, the customer or end users, is the service desk. The service desk should be the single point of contact to IT. Um, you're not doing your customers any favors if you allow them to kind of do an end run around the service desk and contact their favorite um, level two analyst to, uh, to quickly resolve their issues. Yes, that may be helpful in the short term, but certainly you want to, for the benefit of the organization, allow more skilled resources, read here, more expensive resources. You want them to be focusing on proactive delivery activities and not support activities. The service desk should also be able to provide higher quality customer interactions, meaning that they would have the soft skills and the processes in place to better communicate with the end users. I know a complaint often is that some an issue will be escalated to level two, and then it goes into a black hole. And you might call the technician a week later and say, hey, you know, this end user still is waiting for the fix or the um, issue resolution that you promised. And the technician might say, oh, yeah, you know, I did that last week. Well, if it was never communicated back, then um, that really hasn't been effective, an effective customer interaction. The service desk is also focused on the restoration of service, and we'll talk about that a little bit more when we talk about the differences between incident and problem management. They also are advocates for the customer interests. So they understand the challenges better um, that the customers um, are having to deal with on a daily basis and can really advocate for them um, within the IT organization.
The other functional areas include technical management, applications management, and operations management. So these other functional areas, um, technical management is related to the technical infrastructure. So these are the level two and level three um, positions within the organization that handle the uh, support and delivery of um, their respective areas. Likewise, applications management log logically is responsible for the software and applications that are deployed within the IT organization. And between the, in those two, or actually in the, the three areas here, um, especially with operations management, Operations management includes operations control and IT facilities management, so people that are responsible for laying the cables, for monitoring the, the existing systems. There is a lot of functional overlap between and among these three functional areas. So, of course, applications depend on the technical infrastructure. Technical infrastructure depends on facilities, on operations control, and, and vice versa. There is also a dual role that each of these functional areas plays within the IT organization. There is, and I mentioned they, they're responsible for delivery as well as support, which is sometimes difficult to manage. Really, we try to make it so that they can focus more of their time on proactive service delivery instead of on reactive service support. And we do that by pushing down as much of the service support to the service desk as we can. So we really want to enable our service desks to be able to, for example, reset passwords to be able to um, address and resolve some of the more advanced issues that may come up on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, we can do that most effectively by employing some of the processes that we discussed uh, two weeks ago in service transitions. So I'm referring here most specifically to knowledge management. So as much knowledge as we can capture and document, um, that really will help to push the service support um, responsibilities back to the service desk. Let's get into some of the actual processes within the service operations lifecycle. So I mentioned that I was going to focus a lot here on incident and problem management. Um, I think that of all the projects that we do, um, almost every implementation that we do includes some form of incident management. That's usually kind of the entry point for IT organizations. If they do nothing else, they need to be doing incident management, whether it's with post-it notes or outlook tasks or all the way up to the Remedy Enterprise um, service management application. The focus here is to restore normal service to customers as quickly as possible. Basically, if something, fix, if something breaks, we have to fix it. Normal service here is defined according to the service level agreements. And this would be then according to the needs and cost requirements that were negotiated with the business. What I'd like to talk about are how um, we differentiate a little bit between incidents and requests. And I know in some of the systems that we use, I'm thinking here of uh, Remedy Force, everything is logged as a request initially or everything is considered a request, but we differentiate still between a break fix or an, you know, a, a disruption of service and a request for a new or change service. So big differences here between incidents and service requests, and I'm going to illustrate that a little bit more on subsequent slides. Also within the service desk, um, the request console or the even um, they're sometimes still referred to all all referred to as incidents um, we may include in those records access requests and events an access request very simply it's a type of service request but it's related specifically to issues of access and identity again 
as much as possible, we want to enable our service desk to be able to handle these types of requests, even requests for provisioning new accounts. And there is a, are a number of ways that we have of, of automating those type of requests within the organization. Also, we may have external systems. Um, BMC has BPPM for event monitoring. Um, those types of systems might automatically generate incident within our service management tools. So we may, um, again, we may handle these four different types of requests, um, incidents, service requests, access requests, and events. We may handle them all within a single module, but understand that these records or these types of requests are distinct, and really they should be measured differently. So the SLAs should be different for each of those. And looking at the differences between incidents and service requests specifically, um, their service is certainly not the same. So incidents are unplanned outages or failures of service. Service requests are planned. Um, there's no service that has been disrupted. So for example, if I call because my laptop won't boot up, that's an incident. If I call because, you know, I've had my laptop for a couple of years and I want a new one, well, that's a service request. Risks and costs for resolution of incidents can be volatile. So we may not always know what it's going to cost or what's, how much time it's going to take to resolve an incident. But when we have a service request, if I'm requesting a new laptop, my IT team knows exactly what the, the cost is associated with that new laptop and they know what the risks are. It's a fairly low risk implementation or um, fulfillment for that particular service request. The resolutions are provided for each of those by their respective processes. So there should be separate and different processes for um, fulfilling each of these types of requests. Now, an incident can lead to a service request. So for example, if my laptop, I call because my laptop is broken and we go through a number of troubleshooting steps and ultimately it's determined that it's not fixable, then I might, may in fact need to request a new laptop. But a service request, on the other hand, is not going to ever revert back to an incident as part of the fulfillment process. Notice here, too, we refer to um, service requests, standard changes, and access requests. So there's um, some differences in terminology, terminology again here, but those are three distinct things. So we have service requests, which are usually low risk and known costs for um, a, the request of a newer change service. A standard change, um, again, is a, a service request can be a uh, fulfilled by a standard change. So there might, there, that may help us to define the levels of approval. Um, An access, access request, again, if I have, I'm requesting access to a new, um, new system, that may be then fulfilled uh, in the same way that a service request is fulfilled. <clears throat> 